Hello and welcome to Minta Dialogue, episode number 304. Today is Sunday, the 25th of November, 2018. And just before introducing my guest for this week, I wanted to do a shout out to Autumn Schultz for your wonderful recent review in iTunes. This week's guest is Kale Paling, who has been an MP of the Estonian Parliament starting in 2007 when he was just 22 years old. He's very active in pushing through legislation around technology and e-governance, helping Estonia to accelerate its transformation to a digital state and becoming a lightning rod for change. Among his further credentials, aside from having been on a number of high-profile supervisory boards, Kyle is also an entrepreneur co-founding Cache, an insurance marketplace and personal data hub. In this conversation with Kala, we discuss the journey that Estonia has undergone to become a beacon of digital states, the challenges of transformation, some of Kala's thoughts on new tech and prospects for the future. A most insightful interview. Welcome to the Minter Dialogue podcast, where we discuss branding and all things digital. I am Minter Dial, your host. And you'll find the show notes on my eponymous site, mintodial.com. Enjoy the show. Kale Pali. Great to have this opportunity to chat with you in the halls of the Estonian Parliament. So, Kale, in your own words, tell us who you are and what you do. <laughs> uh, it's uh, great to have that, uh, that talk. Uh, but um, I'm a 33-year-old Estonian um, tech visionary and uh, and politician uh, who has worked in the parliament for, for 12 years as a member of parliament. You and I have met a couple of times, several times now, even in London. Um, and you told me about how you got involved in politics. And, and really, as I understand it, you were you have to be amongst the youngest ministers in government anywhere in Europe, if not the youngest. And you're in charge back 12 years ago, of this whole idea of digitizing Estonia. So talk us through what happened, the history of that idea, and, and how it came to be that you were the one that participated, if not led, this whole charge. Uh, I can't uh, take the responsibility of leading this, uh, this change because uh, when I was elected to the parliament and the process was already started quite long ago, so basically when we regained our independence in the early 90s then we understood that uh, we don't ever want to be alone again and we understood that we are relatively poor to to achieve the things that our our neighbors for example like finland have achieved already so we had to do many things much faster uh, than uh, than the others and to to do that, we already understood that the technology will play a huge role in the future. And to every reform we did, we we included this digital mindset. And uh, today, we estimate that uh, one third of the GDP growth has uh, has come from from this, let's say, additional digitizing part to the structural reforms. And currently, we. We even estimate that we save 2% of GDP annually by doing things uh, digitally. So it's, it's quite, a good, quite a good combination in, in added value or efficiency for the state. So when you, when you all started, of course, it wasn't you as a 21-year-old who was leading the whole thing, but you obviously contributed heavily and you, and you brought in a very fresh mindset, yet you also had a leader that was obviously wanting to, to take on this whole gambit and it was in the face of a, a of a population that not necessarily welcoming to it what was his inspiration and maybe where was he looking for guidance as to how to make this happen in a country because really you guys were pioneering so one has to imagine that you you, you just can't learn out of nothing where where were the inspirations coming from uh, the inspiration uh, came from from abroad mostly uh, because uh, at that time the later uh, the the president of Estonia, Thomas Ilves, actually uh, he uh, he studied in states uh, during the uh, uh, Soviet time. Uh, worked as a diplomat in uh, in uh, in states early nineties, and then he was already involved to this. Uh, let's say building up the state uh, again with a with a with a mindset, and uh, and again 
the uh, government itself was relatively young in in early 90s as well and and, and one thing which which is probably true we, we we don't know it because everything happened so fast but uh, but uh, one of the cornerstones behind the success of uh, building up an e state uh, is is that the uh, governments and government officials they trusted uh, private sector they trusted the entrepreneurs who said that we believe that the world is going to go to that direction and we should do this and that kind of stuff and uh, and then we didn't need to build up our own let's say silos like we see in most of the countries nowadays that let's say we have quite efficient well well functioning private sector and at the same time we have let's say parallel structures in in public sector which which we don't need actually we just need the collaboration i mean business do do their business and 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 for the government it's it's their duty is to enable it and and to regulate it and then do all that kind of stuff so so probably the the the, the fact that we were uh, so poor in early 90s uh, worked good for us because we didn't have money to build up a a huge structure in in a public sector we just had to trust the private sector and luckily it uh, it it, end, it ended up in a good place well at some level it's it's one of the rules of agility and and the new way of operating is think limited resources think as though you're spending your own money and presumably because Estonia is such a small country, all the same limit resources are limited, and that poverty where necessity breeds is the mother of invention, and the fact that you didn't have all the resources meant you had to be a little bit wilier about it. What would interest me, Carlo, is to look at what were the things that made the transformation happen. When you go back in time and you're thinking about the challenges, because clearly it wasn't an obvious and easy path, what were the the big milestones that you managed with your team, with your you know your party, to overcome as you went on this path to get E Estonia, the E State, up and running? Mm, probably, uh, again, one thing that uh, that uh, just just happened since the since the early nineties and in the beginning of two thousands, where all the let's say real uh, let's say. Services came into uh, into place. I mean, the tax and customs board and and, and and all all these things, ID card and 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 X road uh, later on. So so it was it was some somehow a a political consensus that we were able to achieve. I think in most of the other topics there there was no uh, consensus, but but building up a society in a way that we include technology and enable technology to operate and to make our, let's say, uh, citizens and businesses' life uh, more hustle-free. It was a, a consensus, and, and, and luckily it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still so that none of the parties are arguing that we shouldn't do it. Uh, but what we currently witnessed to, during the last years is that, uh, that uh, there needs to be an effort and attention on the highest political level possible to 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 make things happen because uh, when we started there wasn't that kind of competition in the world we have between the states so who will be faster and who will who will enable some sort of technology to operate which means that this company will probably pay taxes for the country as well and but currently it's a competition and it's not only a competition between countries it's it's a competition between continents so if we take mm. states Asia, mainly China, and and then European Union. Then I think that the European Union is lacking far behind of of the others, and probably in in a few years we'll see we'll see China uh, taking the the first place in in being the digital tiger or digital leader or or, or whatever we we call them. But uh, but the bottom line is that uh, that uh, with uh, technology itself. Uh, with uh, money only, you won't do anything. You'll need to have this, let's say, leadership. We should go to the moon, and we 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 have to do it. 
and we have to uh, agree on that and this is something we do and then let's say the technology and resources will will follow but without the leadership you can have i mean three times more money uh, but you don't uh, you don't achieve anything when you guys defined with your party this vision because you guys were in power for quite a considerable amount of time what would how would you describe that unifying force that allowed that vision to galvanize all members bipartisanly or these other parties to follow you because the, these decisions did mean that other resources weren't being attributed other things were not happening that you were having to allocate specific to this project, even though it benefits down the road. But what was the guiding principle that allowed for everyone to say, all right, we agree, we're going to go in with you? Mm. There was a certain proof uh, after, after every, let's say, uh, reform and launching new services that, uh, that this is the thing that it's working. Will it, be, uh, will it be, let's say, decrease of number of public officials? Will it be some, uh, some saving in the, in, in the budget? So there was always, I mean, the, the service itself uh, was, was more comfortable. Um, the uh, citizens as, as the clients for the state was, uh, was more satisfied with the service. And so there was always, there was always some proof. And it's it's getting more and more challenging uh, each each year to 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 I mean to to answer the expectations actually that, that that really the the services will run seamlessly maybe 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 next year or or in the next uh, next couple of years so so back then what I want to say is that it was so much easier to 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 agree on that and to to find the consensus. And to find the followers for your for your for your let's say leadership in in this uh, in this world of technology, but now the things are are much more complex, mm-hmm. and it's uh, and and there are also threats. When we started uh, with uh, e-voting, for example, in in two thousand five, so. I mean, if we would have had uh, a scandal like there was in states uh, with the Cambridge Analytica, I think that uh, that uh, this was this would have been something that uh, something really hard to explain. Although the voting system in in states and the voting system is, is in Estonia, they are let's say totally different things. So so we 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 have this let's say many. Security measures that uh, that the systems in uh, in other countries don't have. That's why it's so unique. But if I have uh, some something to suggest to to other countries, then, then definitely e-voting is not the service uh, from where to start because currently there are so many emotions around all the elections, not only e-elections, uh, which uh, which somebody is trying to uh, trying to let's say hack or or, or to do something. So where I get interested in this and where most of the listeners will be, they're not usually running countries or or ministers of of departments, yet they're trying to figure out how to accelerate, improve, increase resources in their transformation process. And so there you are back 12 years ago, and you're participating in this, and you're showing promises delivered against cost savings or, or whatever you're doing. But how on earth did you measure these things? It's not like you could say, well, in these other 16 countries, when they did it, they gained 2%. So you have to come up with a number that you need to achieve, and, and, and it has to presumably be provable. So I'm just wondering what that process was. That Did you go for low-hanging fruit? What were the things that you were doing? Because you obviously can't promise everything right away, even though what's interesting about the e-state is that it's kind of all-encompassing. I mean, it doesn't do everything, but it really does encompass a lot of things. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's somehow uh, hard, hard to explain, but, but, but probably, 
I mean, the aver- awareness of uh, of uh, of achieving the the level of using technology in the society was was so high. The expectations were so high already in the mid '90s when we started. I mean, I mean. Uh, internetizing all the all the country where we where we already have this public internet uh, access points uh, for uh, for all the citizens, but uh, and we started teaching. I mean, computer science already from the fourth grade uh, in the in the in the schools, and then, then the let's say with with doing that, the expectations uh, did uh, did grow uh, all the time, but. Um, but at the same time, one thing that I haven't mentioned before is that, um, I mean, like we have that today in most of the countries, so so the competition between private and public sector for skilled labor, it has been an issue for for years uh, in Estonia, and uh, and actually to 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 get good people for 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 work or to work uh, for the for the public sector it's anyway a challenge so so we need to optimize uh, the the services uh, that could be optimized we need to replace uh, the um, let's say stupid jobs uh, uh, that could be replaced with technolo- technology to decrease the bureaucracy and uh, and it's it's Currently, even more important than it was back then, because because currently, uh, we we can't say anymore that, that that we'll have to decrease the number of public officials working, let's say, for the for the let's say the government institutions, uh, because uh, there will be a so huge transformation in in the field of work, in the field of education, uh, the the work itself. That the officials and public sector workers have to do is is different, but the amount could be even bigger than it uh, has been so far because because there are so many things changing, and none of the states and none of the leaders of the states would like to see somebody left behind. I mean the citizens. So this is a challenge which we which we are facing, and 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 I believe that even we don't have a. A uh, good answer. Uh, good answer for that. Well, I, in I'm terms of the timing as well, because I mean, there there is always a need to 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 find the right timing. When it when when will be the break even to to change the 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 people uh, for the machine uh, to do the job and and in a way that the person itself don't get hurt. I mean, emotionally and and, and mentally, because uh, because uh, they they need to be ready to relearn. Uh, no, nobody wants to get rid of the people, but they they need to be ready to relearn, and and, and this is a challenge as well because not all not, not all the people are ready to relearn like like this. For sure. Well, what you say actually resonates because at the end of the day, so many companies are are looking at all these technologies, and it is complex, and it's mm-hmm. and it's somewhat all interrelated, and and it's very hard to sort of craft your way through it because. A, a lot of us are already behind the eight ball in the first place, and now there's a new wave and it's more complex. And the whole evolution is you're obviously uh, getting, you know, quite expertized in artificial intelligence. What role will it have an impact on society? And then on top of that, in politics, you have to deal with the narrative, elections, and and timing becomes critically important in that context. It is. It is, but uh, and and it is especially important um, at the time now, when we when we see so much, uh, let's say, trying to do a bit of everything kind of attitude in the in in the society, try to be liked by 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 everybody in the society, also uh, in the field of let's say politics. And, uh, and and this is this 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 is a this is worrying me a bit because uh, because in 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 that sense uh, we don't have let's say I, I'm not saying that we don't have anybody but but we have relatively a uh, smaller amount of people trying to follow us at all. And not only, let's say, specifically, for example, our party, but but also all the politicians, because because they don't 
let's say resonate with with each other uh, any uh, anymore and i mean maybe maybe it's a, it's it's a, it's a wrong example but i i believe that and and when i was younger in in high school and i always let's say admired politicians and they were like, like father figures or or something that they who always seem to be at least seem to be cleverer than uh, than than we were and then they did they knew uh, the direction where to go and then had this let's say um we have to go to the to the to the moon attitude but but currently what we see is the huge amount of uh, political correctness and uh, and uh, and and not not trying to say anything in 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 politics and uh, keeping in mind all the challenges which we talked already already before i mean uh, artificial intelligence enabling and regulating uh, technology and platforms and all that kind of stuff so so it's worrying me because there you'll need to make unpopular decisions and the huge amount of unpopular decisions because because uh, the speed of the development of technology is so fast it has been said even even this way that during the next five years the technology will develop as much as it has developed during the last hundred years so basically if we take the last hundred years evolutionary then the next uh, let's say five years it's it's measured or equal as hundred years so we don't basically we don't have a time at all so so there will be a new I wouldn't say world order, but 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 basically the huge restructuring in in the economy, and uh, as the digital, let's say, tiger will uh, will will come and uh, and and uh, let's say uh, relocate uh, the uh, the uh, economic centers. Well, there's a, there's a lot to be said about politics for sure, and in, in especially in certain countries, how the political parties don't actually line up with what people want and, and you know every party has certain issues but you don't want all of them i'm half this half that and, and a lot of people don't seem to attach themselves to parties i want to get i want to get into uh with regards specifically to the east state because and you can correct me where i'm wrong but we now have a country that is entirely equipped everybody has a card an identity card that not only is an identity card, but is also my medical records, is able to do my tax returns at the end of the year in a matter of minutes, thanks to tracking me throughout my year. If I'm in certain countries, my eyebrows are raised as I'm listening to this, thinking, oh my God, the state knows everything about me. So A, do you believe that's what the situation is in Estonia? And how on earth did you get that passed through? Because of um, of uh, citizens trusting the state, because they witness that if they allow uh, and they open some some of the data points uh, of themselves for the state, the the life itself uh, will be so much uh, let's say easier and uh, and more com- uh, comfortable. I mean, if you if you have your pre-filled tax declaration in the beginning of February and then submitting it takes maybe three minutes if you're slow, then I mean, being, uh, let's say, uh, being uh, a citizen of Greece, for example, where you probably have to take a week off to declare your taxes. So, so hide, to hide your swimming pool. So I mean, the three minutes and, and the week, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's basically you have a, a additional week for vacation, I mean, uh, annually. And it's, uh, it's, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. So, so the, the two uh, most, uh, let's say, the two things that people are uh, usually lacking off is time and money. So, so basically, what what we are doing in Estonia is we uh, we are saving people's time and money because because I mean building up this efficient system it's it saves quite a lot of money. So so uh, for a business it's it's more time to focus on your business case to develop your business to communicate with the clients and you do all these things and for the families it's time to play with your with your children or or do the family stuff so instead of i mean filling out some bureaucratic uh, documents 
Kelly, you, you have traveled, and the idea of trusting a government is something that's not given in many countries. If, you know, to, to find another country where people unilaterally say that they have trust in the government, how, how does that trust get created? And maybe if you're thinking in your another country, how does one create that trust? And what are the lessons learned and things that you would advise if you're an organization, whether governmental or business, and you want to have trust, be trusted? Um, technically speaking, uh, it's, uh, it's a question of having no back doors. So basically, uh, uh, citizens can trust the government, let's say, agencies and, and services if they know that the information that they donate or they allow the access is, is kept safely. Uh, and it can't be changed. And, and for that, already in 2010, we, uh, we started using some pieces of uh, the early blockchain technology. We, we called it KSI uh, timestamp back then. Uh, but, it was, but it was used because uh, to have the opportunity to prove mathematically that, uh, that all the information that is here in your data container is kept uh, safely and that none of it is manu manipulated in, in some case. And the other principle is that, uh, that you're the owner of your data. I mean, uh, we have all the case summaries in e-healthcare system, and uh, I can whether open it or close the, close it for for for, for doctors. So uh, so, but if we think philo philosophically, so so, I mean, if I get to an accident and I have some certain very specific allergies, uh, some medicines work for me, some doesn't, and if I have opportunity to close the uh, close the information, but then I know that uh, that I could uh, I could die because the doctors don't know which medicines work for me and then which don't. Or I open it and and it could save my life. And if there is a micro percent of uh, chance that uh, some doctor who has the access for the information will will uh, let's say misuse the information, then I would always choose uh, let's say saving my life. And, uh, and there is always a, a good example with most of the hospitals uh, worldwide uh, where uh, information is kept on paper. So basically, if I, if I take... With, the, if, with, with poorly written um, yeah. doctor's handwriting. Yeah, uh, and th this is another, uh, which, and the handwriting is usually uh, something that nobody understands, yeah. but uh, uh, at least in Estonia. But, but, uh, but, <laughs> but basically, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, if somebody forgets it on, on a table, so it's very easy to go uh, and, and make a photo of it and, and send to a newspaper, and, and, and basically nobody will, uh, will get where this information came from. But if it's an electronic system, then from every log there will be a sign and then and, and basically we have even designed the, the regulations and legislations in a way that uh, I can claim the person who, uh, who saw the information about me but didn't have the reason to, to, to see the information about me. So, so and, and it's the same way in, in a police system. I mean, they, they all have access to, to check about me, I mean, even every minute, but if they misuse the information, then it's, then it's getting criminal. Whether it's the people that are surrounding us in, in, in Parliament or the people, there must have been an enormous effort on education. And when you say no back door, I'm wondering, was this a yes or no Boolean, you have to do it, as in the entire population needs one day, everybody has to have the e-card, so talk us through the educational elements and maybe the challenges you had in educating, whether it was your peers in government or in parliament or the people. So uh, it, was, it was correctly pointed that, that basically with one day everybody needs to have this ID card. Of course, it wasn't one, uh, one day, but, uh, but uh, it was a principle since the beginning that it will be mandatory. Uh, actually, we wasn't the only ones who uh, developed uh, and found, found out that electronic identity will be uh, the, the future. Actually, Finns did it, but they did it in a way that, uh, that they continued uh, 
to issue the cards and identity voluntarily. So basically, I mean, if you have to keep up two parallel system, I mean, the paper-based state, uh, very briefly saying, and then the electronic state, then it won't uh, work out. So, so we did, did it in a way that during three years, everybody had to change their documents and... Uh, and then we issued this ID card, which is the physical part of electronic identity. It's much more than ID card. It just allows you sure. access to the to the system. And uh, and back then we didn't have uh, much services, so probably we are joking that the only thing uh, that we that we did with it uh, was uh, that we cleaned the car windows uh, from ice, ice yeah. uh, during the winter. But uh, but then uh, then actually. Uh, the the private sector was uh, was uh, was was the key in in making these e services. Uh, I mean, to boom. We call them killer applications, and 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 these the first killer applications was uh, internet banking and e school, both uh, done by uh, by private sector. And then then banks said that if if you want to make transactions bigger than three, uh, 300 euros per day, then you must uh, use uh, electronic identity to identify yourself. Before that, we had these code cards and pin calculators and that kind of stuff, which are used in, in many other countries in since, uh, since, since today, uh, until today. But uh, this was the first one. And the other one was eSchool, which, uh, which is basically uh, the system where there was no paper diary, uh, where uh, teachers give grades for the students. They they uh, uploaded it to the e school system and also the homework part and also the feedback how the how the student uh, acted in in a school it's in, it's really really comfortable. Uh, currently, I'm uh, as a new uh, let's say my my son went to first grade this year and then it's really really comfortable to get the feedback from there. But to log into the system, you need to identify yourself with electronic identity. And you can ma- you can imagine how many parents uh, we have uh, for the for the for the students. So so that it was another uh, killer application where where we we saw the number of uh, electronic ID users uh, going up, and it's 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 really really good. And then it's easier afterwards to add, I mean, electronic prescriptions, uh, e healthcare system, all all the other kind of things that you can uh, where you can identify and verify yourself uh, with electronic identity and then currently i mean in all the sector especially financial sector the biggest issue is verification how do you log into your uh, financial service how do you make sure that this is you and and here we have even another results uh, by being developed by by estonian startups which uh, don't take uh, Either fingerprint or, or or card only because it's quite easy to I mean Photoshop the card and uh, and to 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 get it from the black market and, and much much more important is the uh, face bio, uh, biometrics so so in in some of the cases in the future probably we are logging in using our face. Are there any? As I understand it, we have you can't use the card to pay. You can use it to identify your. Identity. We can we can also use it for your commercial loyalty schemes here, uh, and and I know that um, we still have cash, but you are very much moving towards a, a cash lesser state. What does the future hold? What are the what are the next big steps for Estonia in your mind? Uh, the next big steps probably are in some other fields, uh, in, in digital definitely, but, uh, but uh, uh, next to this, let's say, internal approach, uh, uh, I mean, uh, making the state more efficient and develop more and more comfortable services, as the private sector does. I mean, banks and telcos, they are uh, operating seamlessly usually. Uh, you don't know how much you pay for your SMS and and uh, and uh, and data, 
uh, megabytes or gigabytes. So, so the state should operate in, in the same way, actually, seamlessly. So, so make the life uh, very comfortable for your client as, as, as citizen. So I'll, I'll always say it's, it's somehow unpopular to say that the citizens are the clients for the state. And to, 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 to keep the clients, you have to run the good service. And that's what Estonia is, uh, is, is trying to do. And I think that we've done it uh, quite well. And 2014, we understood that this approach that we've had is, is a totally right thing to do. And then we decided to start with a, our own governmental startup called the residency And now we issue uh, the um, electronic identities. Uh, not uh, physical residences, not citizenship, but uh, electronic identities uh, which have access uh, to the Estonian internal uh, infrastructure for all the citizens around the world. And currently we have them almost 50,000 from more than 140 different countries uh, who, who have applied for the residency and, and for whom we have issued the uh, e-residency. E, e and, uh, and, and this is the next big thing in terms of the, let's say, uh, individuals and probably uh, for the states in the future, Estonia will, will act as a platform to provide some services. And uh, I mean, we could, we could run and operate as a tax and customs port for some country, for example, because we have the experience, we know how to make uh, things done. And we just collect the taxes. I mean, in 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 UK, for example, or in or in uh, or in some some uh, some some other country, uh, by agreeing that uh, that uh, that it will be delegated uh, to to Estonia, as it's delegated in some of the cases for some private companies, and then we can just let's say operate uh, the service, take the let's say some certain amount of service free fee from that and then and, and from from that operational uh, stuff uh, we could uh, uh, guarantee the welfare for our own citizens so so the biggest challenge what i've always uh, what i'm always repeating in all the all the all the all the audiences where i speak is that the the biggest challenge for the uh, states nowadays is especially european states is that how to make uh, other uh, countries' citizens to pay for the welfare of your own citizens. So, so that's, that's where the, let's say, state as a platform uh, concept has, uh, has came in. And then it's also for the private companies, I mean, to, to, to really uh, find out the, the functioning, let's say, model to, to operate a, a global business uh, from, from Estonia. I have to imagine that amongst the 140 countries you said that are doing, e, you know, where applicants are, are applying for e-residency in Estonia, I, the Brexit must be provoking or maybe promoting the idea to English companies and people who want to keep a, a foot in Europe. Is that something that's on the radar? And what can you tell us about that? It's actually very much connected with that. So basically, if we if we had some positive news about Estonia and about the residency in Guardian, for example, and at the same time there was uh, some uh, some news about the 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 unclear future mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the access for the single market and then the relations between. Uh, UK and European Union in the future, then we see the increase, and mm. usually it's a huge increase of applications from UK after positive from Estonia, negative, and and combined with negative uh, news uh, from uh, from UK, and and the, and it's it's hundreds uh, during one week, so it's 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 quite quite a lot, and from uh, from every. Every thousand year resident, uh, we estimate that they will give back uh, ten million to to our economy. So, so basically, every thousand, ten million, and it's already quite quite much. And it's 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 just the start. So, if if the businesses will uh, will, will will grow, 
um, and and develop and and so on. So the contribution will be will be much much bigger. Roughly, how much does the new residency application cost per year? It's it's a, it's a cost pace. Uh, I mean the. The, the application itself and the issuing the card, it's, it's around 100 euros because, I mean, all the processing and background search and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but for, for all the other things, I mean, you don't have to pay for, for the e-residency itself, but you'll pay if you, if you use services. some services, I mean, accountant, lawyer, some, somebody, I mean, to, to help... Uh, to keep the, the company up and running. And this is where you get your 10 million from. Last question for you. Um, UBI, do you believe in the universal basic income? What's your opinion? Because you know, you're so much involved with the AI folks and, and what's going on in Singularity in California. I was wondering what your opinion is. Is it something that you see has a role in Europe or, and or in Estonia? I don't see a role for universal basic income because the concept of universal basic income is that it's it should be equal to everybody and uh, and we don't need to equalize the societies because uh, anyway we we have these people who need more help and these people who need less help and that's why it it's it won't work but I have a I have uh, I have even a, a an idea for the reason behind the universal uh, basic income, and I, I think that this is this is something that uh, let's say social democratic parties in in all the countries are promoting because uh, because the world has changed so much after the industrial revolution that uh, they don't know how and who to protect. Because, the, I mean, the core idea of social democrats is always to protect somebody. And, uh, and currently people, I mean, they don't need uh, protection in that sense. They need more, let's say, help in, in, in finding the, the, the right path. And this is what the, what the, what the leaders uh, in the societies uh, have to have to enable and and this is more liberal approach i would i would say to 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 keep the i mean to give a lot of opportunities and then to guide and try to try to let's say find the tailor made solutions for 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 each one of us because because currently uh, as development is so fast i mean there is no no uh, uh, let's say similar jobs. They will be all, all let's say, tailor-made uh, ap- approaches, much more individual approaches than uh, than than so far. It's 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 more liberal uh, stuff. And 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 why why I can easily say that uh, that I don't believe in the universal basic income is that uh, that with the uh, with all the transformation we see the increase of uh, of the number of jobs. The jobs will be different. A lot of jobs will be gone, uh, but most of them will be replaced. And then, but we need more and more people to do this stuff because uh, because I mean uh, there is uh, there is so many so, so many things to do. And uh, and one thing uh, which we need in the society is, is the universal understanding of uh, humanity and empathy. And and this is something that we should put effort on, that uh, that we that we understand what does it mean to be a human being, because at the time when we talk about AI and all this technology stuff and uh, and this kind of things, I think none of the solutions uh, applications will replace uh, a let's say human factor, this this empathy and ethical factor and and, and all that. That kind of that kind of things in in the societies, and, and this is something that we we really need nowadays. Most heartwarming from the ex minister of digital. So, uh, Kari, how can thank you for that? It seems like we could have another podcast, and certainly another beer, and talk more about that. As you know, a topic near to my heart. Um, anyone wants to get in touch with you or follow what you're up to? What's, is there a good way to, to catch up with your thoughts, uh, whether it has to be digital, like I'm afraid? Uh, what is the way? It's just a, just a Twitter account. It's Color by Link, so in Twitter, so you can follow. That's great. And we'll find you in different places. You're a frequent speaker at many conferences. And so if someone wants to hire you, uh, come bring you in as a speaker. 
and, and talk about this because I think it's an awfully fascinating topic, certainly for democracy, certainly for states, but also the lessons that can be learned and extracted, ironically and most rarely, from government into business. And I think that's what's exciting about the journey that we've been on with you. Khaled, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks. Thanks, Minto. Thanks for having listened to this recording of the Minto Dialogue Show. You'll find the show notes and other blog posts on mintodial.com. If you enjoyed the show, please like the handy Facebook button, or better yet, head over to iTunes to give a rating and review. But first, relax to Josh Sachs's finger paint. Oh, Phil. Oh